I've started recording every Mythic Plus key this season, and in these episodes, I'll go over the ups and downs of my journey towards getting that juicy sought after 0.1% title. Starting off the week in a big boy 28 rise, you sometimes go really big at the start here and you pull two of the mini bosses in the opener, which is exactly what we did here with Lust. Unfortunately though, a few of us were not paying attention and one of the Magus casters on the right, as you can see, is casting Corroding Volley, and it does go off. There was multiple kicks available and stops to stop it, but I guess we all kind of just spaced out, so that's definitely on me to blame as well. So two of us end up going down, and you might be wondering, aren't you the guy who plays weak defensive classes like Shaman? Well, that may have been the case previously, but if you look at my Control 3 keybind and the trinket we have, Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have gotten the Farak Trinket. One of my guildmates came through with the Clutch, so surely we never die now, right? After that disaster in the opener, we did recover and clear everything up to tier. And if you've been watching the series beforehand, you know what's about to come up. So, all goes well, we play it clean up until around 35%, and he goes into another intermission where we go collect the orbs. We lose the druid straight away to the AoE damage, I think he might have stepped his toe in the gold poop and then the AoE blast went off so it killed him. I go on my side, start collecting orbs and on the opposite side of the tower, orbs go into the boss, we wipe and that is the first deplete of the week. Next key is another regular in the series which is a 27 Atal. Yasma has quickly become the bane of my Rio gains and that is still happening in this key. So. We start with Razan and the swords, with Lust. Clearing that, we then head left up the stairs. We don't have a monk, so we don't have the monk statue to bait. We did have a shaman and we did have a little bit of discussion beforehand because shamans have a way of baiting it with a totem, similar to the monk tech. But it ended up just kind of like not working out. I don't know why. So we ended up getting a few charges of melee and it's pretty scuffed, but we work with what we got. After clearing Priestess, we head downstairs and we get caught in the fire trap and it incinerates three of us. But like I said, we just don't die now, we're immortal. Even though we didn't even use the trinket, it somehow buffed our character in unseen ways. After the meme deaths, we clear to Vocal and the mage's game freezes so he just stands in the sick puddles in the middle of the boss fight and he dies. Then it's on to Yasma with 8 minutes and 20 seconds, so plenty of room for a couple of wipes, which we obviously won't need to use. Wrong. So on the second soul end, we bait in the usual spot and drop the souls, and then the tank just doesn't move far enough for some reason. We don't use sweep to keep the adds still, or ring a piece to stop the adds going into the boss, and they just fire away straight into the boss, so we wipe. Not to worry though, plenty of time to go again. We pull Yasma, we get the first soul rend, and pay attention to the defences for the mage and the monk, and then boom, soul rend kills them both. Mage didn't really have anything, so I can kind of understand why he did die. He possibly could have had mass barrier or potion left, but the monk had zero excuses as he had multiple defensives up. But still, we have 4 minutes left and bloodless, so it's definitely doable. So a few of us say, last try, obviously. But the monk had different ideas, he just yeets himself off the edge, said GG, and all f balls. Honestly, it does grind my gears when people just dip on keys when it's still timeable. Like, I understand we wiped twice, but the second time was his fault, he didn't even press anything. So, that is the key over. We run it straight back, as we do not give up that easily. And this one went a hell of a lot smoother than the previous one. We do the standard Tyrannical pull at the start with Razan and the Swords, and your boy was top damage, of course. We then go towards the left side of the dungeon, and because we had a Mistweaver now, we actually had the bait statue for the charges, but the Moonkin just wanted to make it harder for everyone and stood out, so the charges went into melee a few times. Bloody Moonkins, man. But we do clear everything, and we only had one death through the entire rest of the dungeon. We blast the rest of the dungeon, no problem, and we get back to our good old friend Yasma. And let me tell you, 
I had some pent-up anger to unleash out here. Thankfully though, we did absolutely destroy her, and we only lost a druid to Racking Pain right at the end. He could have barked or bearskinned, bearskinned, bearformed, but let's be real, no moon can ever press his bear form. So we finally tick off a 27 Atal on Tyrannical, and we get closer to getting all 27s done. After our high of completing the 27 Atal, we instantly sent another 27 DHT, and this one went really smooth as well. Normally in DHT, you pull up to the bear and occasionally pull the two casters behind it, but this time we just opted to do the extra bear. We did funnel things as always because we're enhance. After that though, we did have two quick swift deaths to the birdie charge, like I did last week. Happens to the best of us. And then the paladin stepped in the taste of rainbow shower and died too. We made quick work of the first boss and as enhancement, I do quite like this boss, honestly. You basically have the ads come up every single time your mini cooldown comes up, Primordial Wave, so you can absolutely blast. Next area, we only had one death to Root Burst. Also again, happens to the best of us. We do the DH Night Elf Ninja Tech here, and he does his Fierce Sigil, and we skip the pack to the pack of three, and then we go and attempt the Fairy Cyclops boys. This pack is Pretty sketchy, but thankfully it's not raging anymore, so it's infinitely easier to manage. Again, another boss which is super sick for enhancement with all the extra targets. And just to mention another thing, this boss would normally absolutely rail me on damage taken, but after swapping some gear for more verse and then getting the fire act trinket, bosses honestly feel so much easier. I do feel the lack of damage though because I've got way less mastery and way less crit, but I guess that's a trade-off we pay, unfortunately. Further into the dungeon, we made quick work of the Dragoon. We did a even more ninja move where the DH did his double fierce skip tech. Honestly, DH tanks are absolutely cracked this season, and if you play with a good one, your world is just infinitely easier in dungeons. We quickly blast the pack before the last boss, and as always, Xavius is a pretty tough boss. So for that boss fight itself, it was all smooth until the last phase where most of the time, this is where it goes wrong anyway. The Paladin gets absolutely one shot from the Waking Bolt when the boss was on 10 stacks of his buff, so unless he uses an immunity, he's probably going to die anyway. He then goes down again to Festering Rip because he wasn't dispelled quick enough. And shortly after that, we do end up losing the Druid just to damage going out from Feed the Weak. But thankfully, the boss was already low and the rest of us get it down. Props to the Druid though, he did play really well in this boss. And we got a nice little top damage in overall here. And I'm just going to quickly mention outside of the game. I've been having quite a few issues with my Wi-Fi past couple of weeks. And I also found out for some reason my spell queue window had been changed. No idea why. So when I have been playing over the last few weeks in game, it definitely felt like my abilities had some form of like lag or input lag. Thankfully though, in the current time of recording this right now, I've got an ethernet cable wired through the house and it feels 100 times better. So feels good on that front. We got a nice plus seven and that takes us to three, four, nine, six. Not sure why I didn't say it, but we also got plus four in the previous Atal. So with both of them, we are now super, super close to 3.5k. Diving into a throne and what was previously a risky dungeon for us feels a hell of a lot better with our new setup. Alas though, the key being successful isn't most of the time based on whether or not we survive. It's on the group and their mental. And let me tell you, this dungeon is a short one. Opening pull, we lose to Paladin twice to cast going off on him. Feels bad for him. The priest, I think, was already tilted by this as he takes a pop shot at the tank for some reason, asking him if it's his first time tanking. Not sure any response the tank or anyone else would have given him would have made him feel any better. As we go into the second pull upstairs, there is a discussion on why the paladin keeps dying. And then, in the very next pull, the priest dies to crushing depths. He did have Vampiric Embrace available, so he probably could have kept himself alive. We wait for him to stroll back to us. The tank then goes to pull our next pack and falls over and before the tank's head even hit the ground, 
The priest had already macroed. I can imagine he macroed because he just instantly left the group and he was already her standing out. The run was pretty scuffed, but definitely wasn't over. But on to the next key. I forgot to hit record on this one until we were on tier because I am an Egypt, but it's straight into another 27 rise and we had a pretty disastrous start from what I can remember. We already had 9 deaths and it wasn't smooth at all. This time though, it wasn't the orbs which wiped us, it was one of the dividing strikes where you all need to soak. Unfortunately, our druid had to dispel, so he was a little bit far out, and he tries to rush over to get back in the soak quickly, but he's just slightly out, so we end up losing the mage to that because we soaked as a four. And then a little bit later into the fight, the tank ends up going down as well, and that is the key over. Just a quick thing, I normally have these little quick Rick and Morty type depletes, I don't know if you guys enjoy watching them, I normally just show them anyway just because I like to show each and every dungeon I do in the week, but let me know if you do enjoy watching these or if there's any other ideas you'd want me to put in. We run it straight back again and this one had a pretty unusual end to it and I'd love to know what you would do in this situation. But first we go big with Lust at the start with both of the mini bosses and remember when I said sometimes that the Maiden blends in the pack? Well. An orb cast goes off and it completely annihilates myself and the druid. 100% my bad though. After that we clear the rest of the platform and we move on to a tier where we also pull three of the vanguards with the boss and it went really smooth, didn't have any orbs going into the tower in the intermission and we snagged top damage. We then move on to Morchi where we only had one death which was right at the end of the fight where a clone basically just wanted to give a priest the farewell gift of death. Now heading right to the end of the dungeon with Deos, we did have a couple of deaths early on, we ended up losing the druid here to the AoE, and he was the one doing the orbs for us, so as soon as he went down we ended up getting two stacks straight away. Thankfully though, no one died. And then just after the last two adds come out, I end up going down as well as the other keeper is just spam casting on me in the back, and I've got nothing left to keep myself up. I had already dipped low and I used my health potion there and I basically just needed the tank to turn it off me so it wasn't casting on me. But he does it too late and before you say anything, yes I did get hit by the volcanic at the end but it's only 140k damage out of my 1 million HP. So yeah. Again, later in the fight we end up losing the druid to the AoE, he didn't bear form or bark skin. And then right at 3% of the boss's HP and no room, I quickly type we have to move really quick because we have no room so if we go slow you're just going to end up dying exactly like the druid does again. Now this is the situation which I mentioned at the start, as you can see we've got 20 seconds left here and it's going to be super super tight either way with all the deaths. We have infinite corruption just about to go off, the druid ends up going down again, he had renewal, at least he did press prayer form. And then for some reason the rogue also decides to commit as if we were going to take out the 1% HP on Deos who has a giga fat HP pool and it's almost like he has a mechanic where the adds actually take HP off him because it is so fat. So he dies and we don't make the timer. I wasn't best pleased as I reckon we probably could have pushed it anyway in the last 5-8 to eight seconds if we just played it normally but he didn't agree with my decision, he thought we should all of committed and then just potentially wiped and he didn't even say to commit or anything beforehand so he just kind of wanted us to mind read and all be on the same card but yeah it doesn't always work out that way because it is a pug. The druid's damage throughout the dungeon wasn't the greatest either so I don't think it was his day in that dungeon but I will say people have off days as you'll see later in this episode from myself. I just can't get enough of these dawn dungeons obviously as we head into another 28 fall and remember when I said last episode or whatever episode it was, I ended up showing the first boss for this dungeon, something went horribly wrong. Well, I need your opinion on this. The first slams come out and the projectiles come, and honestly even looking through the footage back again and again an unhealthy amount I may add, I still believe it didn't hit me, but you be the judge. Bloody blizzard man. First boss goes down and then onto timeways which went pretty good. We only had one death from the warrior to the orbs, sometimes happens, but we did get it down and now it's the disaster part of the key which ends up ruining it. 
tank says we're pulling one of the dragons up top into the bottom dragon. So we end up doing two dragons and skipping the one on the right here. But we end up ninja pulling, and I believe it was the warrior who charges just a little bit too close into aggro range. So obviously we now have three dragons because the tank hasn't realized we pulled the one behind, which is just a wipe. And then the blame game starts coming out about who ninja pulled and whatnot. So I end up shadow playing it and looking through the footage and it was indeed the warrior. I end up showing the DH who it was, but the tank was not pleased. He ended up just calling us all monkeys and he dipped and that's the key. Now this is the first of many Waycrests this week which all have a pretty sad story to them unfortunately. Starting off though we head into a 27 and we skip straight to the triad boss where we lose our priest to the curse debuff and then casts are also going on him so he just ends up getting nailed to the ground. He definitely could have been saved, I used my kick earlier but we did have other kicks available. As a result of the priest going down, the paladin racks up two stacks of the movement debuff and he casts a CR which puts him on three stacks. So he ends up dying, he did have bubble and a few other defensives available but he just didn't do it for some reason. Now we have zero CRs left after raising the priest. As the fight progresses though, we end up losing the priest again on the moving debuff and the curse to spell. And then because the priest is dead, the DH then also dies, he doesn't have a way of keeping himself up. So it's up to me in the tank, but on the last witch, Dire Ritual gets cast which is a complete one shot. And it's a first for me this season because I haven't seen that cast since BFA times. Thankfully though, the tank does so with the rest. After that though, we clear a few packs, but we end up racking up a good amount of deaths just to random stuff going off, people getting hit by cleaves and whatnot. Until eventually we end up getting in the courtyard, we do a pull and the tank does vengeful retreat and he goes down midair and just decides to yeet himself into offline mode. And that's the key. Into the next key, this wasn't my best performance. As I mentioned earlier, I have been having issues with my Wi-Fi and input delay in game throughout the week and it just felt terrible. And in this dungeon it just felt completely off. I always like to try to perform as best as I can in dungeons as being an off meta class, you kind of have to stand out or prove to the other classes that you aren't just dead weight. And it's possible you might run into these people again so if you do perform well you might actually get an invite. So showing that it can compete goes a long way as I probably spend most of my week playing LFG Simulator in Valdraken. Even after getting the new trinket and better verse, I still don't really get invites. Most of the time it's a minimum of like 45 minutes just to get into a key. And 9 out of 10 times it's a deplete within the first 10 minutes anyway. That is the nature of the beast though, pushing as an off meta class and especially doing it solo with pugs. Enough ranting though, thankfully we had a set of gamers in here and the dungeon was pretty smooth besides me not pumping as much in the bigger packs. I also then did a really really rocky move. I held my potion for 10 plus minutes because we were going to be skipping the first two dominators on the stairs up to the third boss. And I really didn't want to not have it up for when we got there as I have mistimed it in the past. But me not being focused on the dungeon because of everything else going on. I end up being an idiot and just fat fingering it on the pack just before you do the skip. Can't make it up. So they have to actually go without me and do the pull and kill everything before they can even res me because of my mistake. I instantly owned up to it though and I felt really really bad. But thankfully they were a good bunch of people and they didn't really give me any grief about it. After that though the rest of the dungeon was smooth as butter and I only had a death right at the end of killing the last boss as Sting Swarm was on me and it ticks like a truck on Tyrannical, but we do time the key and that gives us a plus 2 which takes us to 3498, so we're a mega close to 3.5k. I eventually managed to get myself back into another weight crest as most groups nowadays only want mages and I can't really argue against that as they are completely broken in this dungeon. Not sure if you remember at the start of the patch, but shamans and druids used to be able to pre-shapeshift the soul thorns if it was targeting you so it just wouldn't go off at all. Well, mages basically have that exact same ability in this current time, so why wouldn't you take them? Please revert it back for us just for the last few weeks blizzard, it would really help me not sit in LFG for hours on end. Pretty standard pull though, we try to triad and then we deal with them. We then attempted Goliath, but we end up losing the warrior. 
He did have Enraged Regeneration still up, which he can use while stunned, but he just, I guess he was maybe saving it for Burning Brush. And the healer didn't keep him up, so he ends up going down. And on this boss, once you lose one person, it's really hard to recover. The rogue ends up getting soul thorned and the tank dies whilst we are getting him out. But we do give it one more go on the boss. And then you're going to see some grade A bullcrap coming up right here. I get targeted with soul thorns and we get a lightning strike right underneath my feet whilst I'm in the middle of soul thorns. So then the boss triggers burning brush whilst I'm still in soul thorns. And that just completely kills me and the attempt we had on the key. It's an already ruthless fight, but the fact that you can get RNG wiped from a bad fire spawn is just so ridiculous, honestly. Next is the 27 throne, and it was an extremely smooth dungeon and one of the cleaner dungeons I've done this season. There was only a handful of deaths, and the first was me getting two casts back to back, so I ended up just going down straight away. I didn't have my kick up either, so couldn't actually stop one of them. The next, which honestly happens in most of the throne keys I've been in, is Crushing Doubts because that ability is redonkulous to recover from. If you don't have some way of instantly topping yourself by withering potion or another way, you're basically stuffed. The majority of the dungeon was pretty smooth, but further into the key with this pack here, normally on Fortified you do tend to skip this because it is a really hard hitting pack and you're going to see why now. I pop my trinket here which gives me close to 2 million HP, so, you know, you don't really expect to die. All of them wind up their spear cast, and it just takes me out to zero. So even on Tyrannical, if you get bad RNG on who they target, you see what happens. So it doesn't seem that we are that immortal as we thought we would be with the Trinket. Mind Flayer boss was fine. We did some tech here where you LOS for the first 5 or so seconds and then the warrior instantly gets a spell reflect back onto the boss. Unsure if it's a known strategy, but we did it nonetheless. We only had one death on the boss as well, which was from the healer dropping, but we got him quickly rezzed and we finished the boss. Last boss was a breeze, and that Gadies and Lentzman gave us a plus five, which takes us to 3503. So we finally hit 3.5k. Honestly, such a massive achievement. We're in the top 100 of enhancement shamans now. And now, it's the road to 3.6k and beyond. A few more dungeons left for the week, and one of them was an Everbloom, which we'd queue back up with the Warrior and the Monk from the previous key. Everbloom is a spicy dungeon on Tyrannical, especially Council, as that boss is generally the Pug Breaker, with the coordination you need for kicks and whatnot. Or you end up just breaking the key on the opening pole of the dungeon, so quick, easy, in and out. Throughout the start though, I just try my best to lock down and CC mobs and do as much 6 target damage as I can because I cannot compete in these massive pulls. We get down with a bot easily and we may not have been top overall damage but at least we won on boss damage and that's what makes me feel better. We then clear the area on the opposite side of council so we can do the warlock jutsu things with the gateway just to skip past the mobs. We start council and the warrior instantly goes down to a melee hit might have been a bit overzealous there as the tank hadn't quite hit everyone with Sigil of Flame, so Tilu ends up mealing the warrior. We do manage to get Tilu down, so all good on that front, but now we have zero CRs, and then in a tragic turn of events, the monk follows the tank with the charge and he goes down, and because we have zero CRs, we can't sustain versus the damage going out, so we wipe, and that is the dungeon over. After that we try again with a Waycrest and I'm going to speed run these ones because it's basically a similar story for the rest of the Waycrest runs. We did the standard triad pull and we end up getting a few deaths after that in the courtyard clearing as it's a pretty dangerous area. The druid goes down to a few spits by the maggots and the same thing happens to me. Thankfully though I do have Reincon so I instantly get myself back up and we recover the pull. And then it's on to Soulbound Goliath the pug breaker and it was going okay until we lost the priest on burning brush he did use a defensive but he just couldn't keep himself and the rest of us alive then fast forwarding to 38 percent on the boss's hp the druid gets thorns and he dies in three ticks so just yeah such a hard hitting ability he definitely should have pressed bear form because it would help us out we raise the druid back up and that's the last of our crs and then we end up losing the tank as the healer was through putting on the rogue in the soul thorns 
and that's the key ogre. Then for the last waycrest this week, which ends the exact same way, but just slightly further into the Goliath. I'll skip the start here as we do the standard stuff anyway. We only had one death going into this boss, so it was actually smoother than the last run. But at around 50%, we end up having Burning Brush go off again, just like last time. It takes out the Paladin, but we end up CRing him. And then right after that, we get Soul Thorns, which goes on me. I end up going down, but thankfully I do have Reincon, so we're straight back to five people. We then lose the Monk to Soul Thorns. The Priest puts down Barrier, and it just completely misses the Monk. Uh, yeah, so he ends up just taking full damage and goes down. He did have Karma available as well, so if it was me, I probably would have just pre-used it just in case, because I normally do that with my Trinket. I then end up getting Soul Thorns, and I end up having another external issue with my game, which caused a massive freeze here, as you can see. Can't see anything, it's just stuck. But even without the freeze, it wouldn't have changed the outcome of being four people on this boss. So that marks the key being over. And the tank wasn't too pleased with the healer, and he basically just insulted their healing before he left. Now for our last key of the week in a 27 rise, and I know there are quite a few of the same dungeons this episode, I am sorry, but I am just really trying to get them done, and they just don't want to be timed. I am trying, and they just don't want to at all. Pretty short dungeon, again, unfortunately, we had a couple of deaths at the starting area, just from AoE damage and the snake guy just choking someone to death. I've just started saving my kick for the Corroding Volley as I have zero faith in it being kicked by anyone else with all my previous experiences. Here was fine but I end up making a mistake here in the intermission. I run over the edge of a ball and it doesn't actually register so it goes straight into the middle. I have done that with other orbs in the past where I ran over the edge of them and it's collected them so yeah it was my bad. The tank was not pleased and he was already straight away just going, oh, this shaman. But it was just a case of me thinking I got it more than actually me just not seeing it. So silly mistake. Then we skip to Morchi where somehow, and this is the first time I've ever seen this happen, the tank dies on the very first frontal on Morchi as a demon hunter. So questionable stuff right there. And then you'll never guess what happens on the second sandblast. He dies again and then he instantly shame all F4s out of the game and that's the key and all the keys done for the week. That marks the end of the episode. We did have many many depletes this week but we did hit 3.5k so it's definitely worth. And we got the frack trinket so pushing should be a lot easier when we eventually get invited into a key. We end the week at 3503 and now we aim for 3.6. Hope you enjoyed the episode and next episode possibly may be delayed as I am going on holiday next Friday and I usually edit the footage on the weekends but we shall see. If you haven't, join the Discord and if you like the UI, it's also in the Discord for free. Take it easy and do not deplete.